If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the new Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 50% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. So much for granny shifting. <laughs> She's not buying. She's not buying it. We're screwed. I'm not gonna take up. <laughs> Who's Dominic Toretto? He's number one on the call sheet, sir. Who's Dominic Toretto? It's whose movie you're in. That is just a taste of the fun the F9 cast had on set. You can go to ET. Happening now. Donations, just one way that San Antonio is preparing for the expected influx of Afghan refugees. That story coming up. San Antonio organizations sending food and supplies to Louisiana to help families impacted by Hurricane Ida. A behind the scenes look at their efforts next. And we could see a few new pop-up showers this afternoon. So we'll take a look at the radar along with an update on the tropics. I'll see you in a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. And for those remaining Americans, there is no deadline. We remain committed to get them out if they want to come out. The first at five, President Joe Biden sending a message to Americans still in Afghanistan. Right now, the president says 100 to 200 Americans stayed behind for their own reasons. Today, President Biden also saying the decision to end the military lift operations in Kabul was based on a unanimous recommendation from both civilian and military advisors. Even as San Antonio's Afghan community fears Taliban reprisals against loved ones still in Afghanistan, the Center for Refugee Services saw some of its first new arrivals yesterday. Six Afghan families, a total of 40 men, women and children are now in San Antonio. Jesse DeGuriato says the center is still trying to do what it can to help those still stranded overseas and their anxious families here. Gone was the crowd of local Afghans who'd come earlier asking for help getting their loved ones well out of reach of the Taliban controlling Afghanistan. We told the translator or the interpreters to explain to their families that the forms are not going to do any good anymore. Not since the last U.S. troops have left Afghanistan and the airlifts carrying over 100,000 refugees have stopped, leaving thousands more behind. We want people to not lose hope, even though things are very, very dire. But instead of the thousand or so applications filed last week on behalf of loved ones, it's believed humanitarian parole is now their only option. And that basically amounts to applying for asylum. And why Constantino says she needs legal advice to give those wondering what to do now. Even so, donations to help the new arrivals haven't stopped. All these linens and towels are just some of the donations that have come into the Center for Refugee Services, but it says more are needed because more are coming. And now when you watch the news and you see what's happened in Afghanistan, it breaks your heart and have to do something. An Afghan and his family living in San Antonio flew out before last week's deadly explosions. Fearing retaliation, the man who works at Catholic Charities didn't want his face shown. His prediction for his home country? There's no hope. Unless a miracle happens. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Crime Stoppers needs help solving the 2016 murder of Jacob Perales. They have upped the reward amount for information that leads to an arrest in this case. Perales died exactly five years ago today. He was found in the 3600 block of Piedmont. Investigators say his family was trying to help him, but he died there at the scene. An autopsy later revealed that he died of head injuries. Crime Stoppers offering $20,000 for information that leads to an arrest. He was caught red handed. A man accused of using a homemade U.S. Postal Service key to steal mail from up to 30 victims now facing charges. According to Castle Hills Police, he stole stimulus checks and forged about one hundred thousand dollars in checks. What are you doing with your friend's mail in here? He was in your car. He left his mail in there. The suspect arrested this morning after someone reported a suspicious person is stopping at mailboxes in a Castle Hills neighborhood. Officers later found that man parked in an alley with mail from multiple addresses in his car, along with that homemade mailbox key. 
He was arrested and faces state and federal charges. Recovery efforts in Louisiana continuing at this hour after Hurricane Ida made landfall Sunday. These images released by the Louisiana National Guard show just how devastated part of that state remain. Louisiana Governor John Bell Edwards calling it a catastrophe and warning people to not return home yet. The schools are not open, the businesses are not open, the hospitals are slammed. There's not water in your home and there's not going to be electricity. Right now, it's estimated parts of Louisiana will go without power for a month, which poses another risk as temperatures are expected to reach more than 100 degrees. And as recovery efforts in Louisiana continue, people from right here in San Antonio are on the way to help. Local organizations are sending food, water and supplies to help families impacted by Hurricane Ida. Our Tiffany Huertas has a look at the different ways organizations are lending a helping hand. We're going to be positioning this truck in Lafayette and then that will trickle into other parishes that were impacted by the storm. A San Antonio food truck filled with water, snacks, fruits and cleaning supplies headed to Louisiana today. For many families, they were told they wouldn't have power or water for a week to three weeks. A lot of the grocery stores were also impacted. The president of the San Antonio Food Bank says if hurricane evacuees head to San Antonio, they will be ready to help. When we had Hurricane Harvey, so many people around the world sent support to Texas during the winter storm. Neighbors, neighboring states, families all over the country worried about us sending food and supplies. Now it's our turn to pay it back. Our canteen units are there. Brad Mayhar with the San Antonio Salvation Army says they have a team stationed in one of the hardest hit areas, Gonzalez. We'll be able to offer three meals a day to not just displaced residents, but first responders and any volunteers that are on site out there. Salvation Army officer who is traveling can offer spiritual care prayer for anyone who uh, would like to have that. The San Antonio Humane Society has already taken in a group of 16 dogs and is preparing to receive an estimated 100 pets evacuated from Louisiana tomorrow. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And tomorrow marks the start of Hunger Action Month and our KSAT community partners hosting a town hall to discuss food insecurity in South Texas. We'll be speaking with a panel of experts about that very topic and answering questions submitted by you, our viewers. You can watch on KSAT.com or on the KSAT TV app. It is happening from 2 to 3 p.m. tomorrow. We have all the information on KSAT.com along with ways that you can help make an impact in our community. Also tomorrow, San Antonio entering stage one water restrictions. The first time SAWS has entered water restrictions since May. It means outdoor watering with a sprinkler or irrigation system limited to before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. One day per week. Your day based on the last number in your street address. Stage one restrictions will remain in effect till the aquifer is above the trigger level for 15 consecutive days. We have all this information and more on KSAT.com. And you know, it has been quite a while since we've been under restrictions, so not bad, all things considered, during uh, what's typically a very dry summertime around here. We've done pretty well. 98 degrees, that was our high temperature today. We briefly hit 98, the average is 94, the record 103, that was set back in 1954. And you look at our temperatures out there right now, and you see them largely in, well into the 90s, 98 Port SA, uh, 99 Pleasanton, 95 Seguin, and 91 in Bernie. As we go through the evening, we can't rule out a stray thunder shower or two. We'll take a close look at the radar coming right up and talk about how rain chances change into the weekend. Straight ahead, Steve. Thank you, Adam. TxDOT leaders voting today to allocate billions of dollars for major road projects across the state. Our Samuel King joins us now. And Samuel, $4 billion is set to come to the San Antonio region. Yes, yeah, Stephen Meyer, this is all a part of TxDOT's Unified Transportation Program, or UTP. It's basically a 10-year plan outlining priorities in transportation. In our region, that includes major projects on 281, I-35, and Loop 1604 in the short term, projects on Highway 90 and State Highway 211 in the long term. 
officials stress there's a chance not all of the projects could be completed or funded as planned, but it's important to get them on the books nonetheless. We'll have more on these plans coming up at 6 and also more on a new task force when it comes to safety on Texas roadways and how to fund safety improvements. A look at Transguide right now. This is 1604 at Houseman Road. You see that big uh, sort of uh, crane there. That's part of the major construction project that is going on right now. Part of the UTP, but it's already funded. We're going to see some alternating closures here this evening, and you'll also see uh, some delays there. So uh, watch out for that. Also, if you're, you're on Wurzbach Parkway on the north side, a couple of crashes at Wetmore and at Northwest Military. Thank you, Samuel. Now to the COVID front. The CDC is saying nearly 97% of U.S. counties are reporting high or substantial community transmission. That's across the country. It's stretching, stretching U.S. hospitals and healthcare workers very thin. ABC's Dan Lieberman with the latest. At one hospital system in Florida's Panhandle, storage rooms are being used as hospital rooms as hallways fill with patients, staff in Lee County, Florida, begging people to get vaccinated. We're losing 8 to 12 people a day in our health system, and it's not necessary. In California, one of those people, a pregnant ER nurse with five children who officials say died from the Delta variant last Thursday. Her seven-month-old baby delivered after she was intubated. My mom and I went in to see her one last time on, on that bed. That's an image that's going to stay with me. Her husband, still hospitalized with COVID, texting his sister-in-law. He was trying to breathe and he said, if anyone is not vaccinated, I suggest you do now. All of this on live television. This as COVID cases among children continue to rise in the U.S. with 204,000 reported last week. Five states are now under a civil rights investigation by the U.S. Department of Education, where Republican governors made it against the law to require students to wear masks. We know the spread of COVID happens when masks are not being used. Pennsylvania's governor announcing that all students and staff will be required to wear masks when in-person learning begins the day after Labor Day. Some good news in a new Axios Ipsos poll. Fewer Americans saying no to the vaccine with just two in 10 now saying they're not likely to get the vaccine. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. The issue of homelessness is far from a new problem, but homeless encampments are getting some new attention and the arguments over what to do about them have gotten louder. That is the topic of tonight's case at episode rather of case that explains. We'll be talking about the state's new ban on encampments, the city's existing policy, and we will be hearing from the people experiencing homelessness, people living on the streets, as well as those fighting every single day to help them change that. KSAT explains the debate over homeless encampments streams live at 7 o'clock on KSAT.com, the KSAT TV app, and our KSAT Facebook page. You can also watch the full episode on demand later this evening. Preserving a piece of Alsatian history in a small South Texas town, how some Castroville residents are banding together to try to accomplish this, and what they have to say about growth and development in their community. It's up next. In New at Five, we're headed to the Little Alsace of Texas, Castroville. It was 177 years ago tomorrow that Henri Castro brought a bunch of colonists from Alsace, France, to settle along the Medina River. And now, all these generations later, their descendants are making a bold move. As Marilyn Moritz tells us, a group of families is trying to preserve the heart of downtown by buying it, one old building at a time. One glimpse of the steep roofs and flower boxes, this seems much farther than 25 miles from San Antonio. This is a shame a dog though in Gosterville. That's welcome to Castroville in Alsatian. Helen Lutz grew up here, still speaks her grandparents' language, but her village has changed. This was actually a meat market, Dan's market. But next door adjacent to this in the same building was a saloon. Now this quaint time capsule of a town is gaining population and interest from developers. Locals see it as encroachment from urban sprawl threatening their identity. The real fear was that this 
downtown, which has so much charm, so much potential, um, would get bought up or, or knocked down even um, by all of that growth coming in. So Joshua Kemp, an eighth generation Castrovillian, and some 30 local families are putting their own money where their memories are. They formed a downtown redevelopment fund. In fact, they've already purchased their first four buildings, including this one, the old post office, which they plan to transform, redoing the facade and the inside. The vision is to curate a bustling, family-friendly downtown district with new businesses. Like a microbrewery um, for an art gallery, for a bookstore, uh, for a high-end European uh, or American contemporary restaurant. All the while being true to the original architecture. So that the Alsatian generations of the past, if they got in the time machine and came here, they would recognize everything. But this rare move is about more than saving buildings. For Bradford Bame, it's personal. Our great, great, great grandparents came here and built this place from scratch, literally. It's about investing in the future by cherishing their past. I don't want to be the generation that lets it drop. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Beautiful buildings. I just love stories like that, talking about the history of our area. And this is a big part of that as well. Sky 12 flying high over Mission Concepcion this afternoon. Yeah, love this view of the missions or at least one of the missions. All right, 90, what did I say, 97 out there? That's quite an increase from yesterday. We have places not far from San Antonio that are reporting triple digits, I noticed. Adam. Yeah, we, we do have that on the map, of course, this time of day, this time of year. We're going to have some triple digits in the typically warmer locations, particularly west and southwest of town. Let's get right to our weather headlines here. I want to get to this rain chances only about 20% the next couple of afternoons. Then when we get into the Labor Day weekend, it's looking sunny and dry with the similar warmth that we've been experiencing well into the 90s. Tropics, nothing near the Gulf of Mexico to worry about or even look at as of now. A little area we're watching in the Caribbean for the future many days ahead from now, but that's it. You look at the radar screen, isn't a whole lot of activity out there. This is over the past couple of hours. We had a few pop up in Kendall County as well as Kerr County, but not a whole lot of activity. And these don't have much of a push in the atmosphere to really move them. So they're really just sitting in pretty much the same spot and then raining themselves out. There's a slight chance of a little bit of development here and there over the next couple of hours through sunset but odds don't really favor a whole lot more developing here. And you look at the satellite and radar and across the state, we had a little bit of development, especially up into Oklahoma, but not a whole lot in terms of extensive rain like we had even compared to yesterday. What we have here, of course, remnants of Hurricane Ida. You can see a big rainmaker, severe thunderstorms and severe storms possible on this right side of the storm, that east side, Georgia up to the Carolinas, parts of the mid-Atlantic could have some severe weather with it. Otherwise, we're just looking at a big rainmaker as that moves into the New England area and continues to dump a lot of rain. Here's the tropical satellite and what we have, see that little dot right there? Yeah, that's Tropical Storm Kate. That's going to just move northward out in the open ocean and not going to be a threat to any land. We also have a new tropical depression 12. That's that area of active weather just off the African coastline. So of course we'll be monitoring that as it gradually moves westward in the coming days and likely strengthens. And then in the Western Caribbean, just a little area that could have some development. We're talking a week or more from now. 95, that's our current reading out there at the airport officially in town. Feels like 99 though when you factor in the mugginess out there. Lytle's 97, Fair Oaks Ranch 95, Seguin 95 degrees. You look across the state, not a whole lot of 100s until you get to our neck of the woods. That's the thing. Del Rio 104, Catula 103 along with Laredo. Meanwhile, 92 in Fredericksburg, Gonzales feeling some heat at 97 degrees and Beeville 96. Of course, we've got the dew points well into the 60s, even near 70. So we feel the typical mugginess for this time of year. I do anticipate some of those dew points to drop off a little bit this upcoming weekend, Saturday, Sunday, even on into Labor Day. So this evening, a 10 to 20% chance of a shower here or there through sunset, then clear sky, minimal breeze southeast at about five to 10 miles per hour, but I think 10 miles per hour is even pushing it. And then tomorrow we start the day at 76, top out at 97 for the high temperature, mixture of sun and clouds, and just that off chance of a few rogue isolated showers popping up, 
predominantly dry. And that's going to be the case the next couple of afternoons, Thursday and Friday included. Highs anywhere from about 96 to 97. We get into the weekend, maybe add on a degree or two, but as it stands right now, it looks like we'll be just under 100, at least so far. <laughs> just under. All right, thanks, Adam. All right, cut down day for a lot of teams across the NFL, including the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, and kind of surprising, they let go two of their quarterbacks, only kept one. Who did they keep? When we come back, we'll let you know. And who wants to Sean Watson in the NFL? Coming up. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys only keep two quarterbacks on their 53-man roster for now. That's after they released both Garrett Gilbert and Ben DiNucci today. That means Cooper Rush is Dak Prescott's backup for now, even though there are other quarterbacks available. Teams had until 3 p.m. today to trim their rosters for the regular season. Rush completed 29 of 46 passes in the preseason for 272 yards, two touchdowns, and most importantly, no interceptions. Here's what Cowboys owner Jerry Jones had to say about keeping Rush over Gilbert and Danucci on his weekly radio show in Dallas. I just think that he's uh, uh, shown that uh, he uh, can uh, run the complete offense. And uh, credit to him, he had some tough competition. Uh, those guys uh, didn't cut him any slack. Uh, he's had a lot of reps. All of our quarterbacks have because of the absence of Dak. Uh, all of those things make us feel real comfortable here. All right, the Patriots did release Cam Newton today, and there are reports the Cowboys will explore the possibility of signing the former number one overall draft pick, but he is unvaccinated. So here's a look at some of the notable cuts here by the Dallas Cowboys today. In our first section here, it includes Danucci and Gilbert, along with some safety, offensive tackle, another safety, and a defensive tackle. One guy we thought might make the team and probably will make the practice squad, Rondell Carter, defensive lineman, all the way down to Braylon Jones, Brandon Smith, the wide receiver, and Johnny Dixon are gone. The owner of the Miami Dolphins, Stephen Ross really wants Deshaun Watson on his team, but so far they've been unable to reach a trade deal with the Texans, who, according to Yahoo Sports, wants three first round draft picks and two second round picks for the controversial player who's facing 22 civil lawsuits for sexual assault and misconduct during massages. The Texans have struggled without him, and their new head coach knows it. I got to go back to our last preseason game. I did not like the way we were offensively from the standpoint of turning the ball over. And, and I say that because, you know, statistics through the years have said that, you know, winning teams, winning teams are always up there in the top ten in the league and turnover differential. And in this particular game, uh, you know, we, we lost the game because we turned the ball over too much. All right, here's a look at some of the Texans' cuts as well. They include a defensive tackle in Jaleel Johnson, also Derek Rivers, safety Jonathan Owens, Chris Moore, and Jordan Vesey at wide receiver. Special Olympics of Texas announcing today they are having to postpone their state games once again due to COVID concerns. The games rescheduled for September the 18th through the 21st are now postponed again until May 12th through the 15th of 2022. After landing these games, they have been unable so far to actually execute them. And I know it's a huge disappointment, mainly for the children and the athletes involved, because this is what they live for every year. I attended the state games up at College Station one year. Yeah. I can't tell you how much fun I I had and watching them have so much fun so this is another setback but it's a smart move for now better safe than sorry you got it mm. thanks Greg we'll be right back that's all our time thanks for watching the news at five world news up next see you back here at six